are here with Lisa from Black Powder and Bloodlines, which is one of my favorite games to play. Um, so you guys might have seen a little bit about it. I haven't done a lot of videos, but I am planning one or two, so don't worry, it's coming. Um, it's basically a game sent in like the Renaissance sort of period, but with orcs. I think that's probably the way it was described to me. It's very oversimplified, but it is, <laughs> it is a very, very in-depth game, and they did such an amazing job. I feel like um, when I played a lot of D&D &D and tabletop, I always feel like there's two kinds of DMs. There's the dungeon master who feels it's them versus the players, and then there's the dungeon master who's like, this is my story. I want to create a wonderful story. And I feel like your team was very much the that story dr driven group that just wanted to see amazing things happen. Okay, so just the top three ways you find of working with players as an organizer as opposed to against them. Yeah. So that's okay? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yes, um, okay, so uh, at Black Power of Bloodlines, we definitely believe in working with players and not against them. That's huge. Um, it's even in our rules if you go all the way to the back and read the GM section, which you don't have to because yeah. it's just for the GMs, but it gives you an idea of our values when we go in into GMing this game. And the number one thing is that my primary motivation for running this game is to see what will happen. Yeah. And so my advice is to write your game so that it is collaborative. If you want to write a story where you know what happens and it all goes exactly to your plan, then just write a book. Yeah. <laughs> um, or make a movie. <laughs> Do a play. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you want something to be... If you want to make a lot, make it collaborative. You've got players there. They have so many cool ideas. They do so many cool things and your game will be so much richer if you allow them to actually help you tell the story. Yeah. Um, so we specifically wrote Black Powder and Bloodlines so that there are no answers. We just put in interesting questions, you know? Here's a situation. Are you going to kill this person or let them live? Your choice. Doesn't bother us whether you choose to kill them or let them live. Either way, it's going to be an interesting story and that's what we're in it for. So that's my first one. Um, the second one, which also coincides with the rule, um, uh, the second uh, guideline for running Black Powder and Bloodlines, and that is um, be a fan of the players. So uh, we are specifically told that we have to be a fan of the players, and this is so important and so good. Uh, when, and I've been in previous games as an NPC or even run games, and the player will come up to you and say, I'm going to do this thing and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be great. And you just go, oh my goodness, that's ruined everything that I had planned. And your instinct is to go, no, and get angry and, you know, have rocks fall on them. <laughs> <laughs> if you can change that instinct to go, wow, that's great. That's so exciting. Yeah. You should do that. That's such a better story than what I had planned. <laughs> then they'll have more fun and you'll have more fun and you'll tell a better story. Yeah. So um, we are constantly reminding ourselves to be a fan of the players. Yeah. It, and it also helps, you know, then when they have questions and stuff like that, you can just encourage them to enjoy the game and encourage yeah. them to think outside the box. So how do you deal with in that situation if someone does something that's definitely going to break your game? Well, if you listen to step one, you yeah. write the game in a way that they can't break it. <laughs> that's good, that's good. But what if, um, like, you don't want an all-out slaughter? Because your game yes, is yeah. not, and this is a big thing between, um, like, Swordcraft, which is a battle game, yeah. with some RP sometime, um, to a game that is RP with some battle sometimes. So it's like <laughs> almost mirror in that way. Yes, yeah. um, and we do have a lot of people in our community that come from a very fighty background. Yeah. So if you have people thinking, like, oh, it's not a big deal, because they're not used to permanent death. Yeah. And they're thinking, oh, I'm just going to go and go into the hall and kill a whole bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How would you deal with that extreme of a thing that goes yeah. against the core of the that game? That goes against the core of the game. So um, in some cases, it's about a miscommunication. Yeah. So we always strive to communicate with the players yeah. honestly, openly, and get, let them know what they're going into. Um, in some cases, we might even tap the player on the shoulder out of character and say, oh, that's maybe breaking the game or it's maybe stepping outside what we expected for the game or you know and that does happen sometimes that we sort of say oh you know actually the 
orcs are more Viking and less Native American in this yep. game or something yep. like that. Um, in other cases, you try to get really creative really fast, yeah. especially in a way that will allow them to achieve what they want to achieve, yeah. but in a way that is less kind of game breaky. Yeah. So maybe they've decided to go in and slaughter a whole lot of people because they're after something that's in the center yeah. of the room and they think the only way they can get it is by killing everyone yeah. and we will have an NPC go in, demand to be given it, and take it away somewhere safer. Yeah. And so the player then gets to go hunt that NPC and Fantastic. find the safe place and get the thing that they were looking yeah. for without breaking everything else. Yeah. Sometimes this works better than other times, sometimes yeah. it does feel a bit like you're pushing them in a certain direction, yeah. but usually, hopefully, it's pretty seamless. Yeah. That. Well, that's awesome. So that's another good reason to communicate with the organizers as well. So yes. if you have a grand plan where you're like, okay, <laughs> I've decided that super rare stone in there is mine <laughs> um, and I want it. Yeah. So going up to, so the other way of helping yeah. work with organizers well, to yes. achieve your things. Exactly. So. That was my third point. The third yeah. point is listen to the players. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Sorry, I've like jumped ahead. So no, yes. that's great. Um, so it's really important just to listen to them because they'll tell you what they want. This It's really great when they tell you before the game, when yep. they say, hey, this is my character idea, does this work? It's a great opportunity to say, yes, that works. Maybe you could tweak it a little bit in this way yep. or um, understand that going in, if you choose that option, you're going to yep. be presented with these kinds of games. Yep. Are you ready for those kinds of games? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. But then even at the event, when you have a player come up and say, oh, I was kind of wondering about doing this thing or that thing. They're telling you what they want to play and what they yeah. want to do. So you can then go back and run around and go, okay, like this person's feeling like they're yeah. a bit overwhelmed. So why don't we like stop throwing monsters at them for a little bit and yeah. see what happens if they get a yeah. t chance to breathe and calm down yeah. and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And then especially after the game as well, that's yeah. when you get the information that they actually go, oh, this worked, this didn't, right. Yeah. You know what to do for next time. Yeah. Um, it's definitely something I've seen other GMs do. Um, where they haven't really listened to the players as they've told the GMs their story. Yep. And they've written a story that they think suits the character, but they're imagining their own character, yep. the one that sort of looks and sounds yep. a bit like the one that the player's playing. And they've given a game to that, but they haven't really understood the intricacies of that yep. player. So, or at that character. So I think it's just really important to try and see the character from yep. the player's point of view. Yep. Because you can miss just by a little bit, yeah. and it's not very fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say, um, with Black Powder and Bloodlines, um, like with a lot of LARPs I do when I have some crazy ideas, which I often do, uh, surprise. So I picked an ST and I messaged them, uh, in this case ST is Storyteller, uh, every group seems to have a different name for them, but some sort of organizer, if there's one you already know from something else or you feel more comfortable with, message them. If they don't have the answers, I will tell you this right now, they will always just give you to someone else. Or they'll say, hold on a sec, I'll get that answer. Yeah. So I pitched my whole character idea, which I'll do a video on Zerlina, um, and which will be very interesting. And um, I have to say they were fantastic. In fact, probably one of the best games I've ever done in terms of that. I got a lot back really quickly. It was very positive. I wasn't really told like, no, you can't do that. I was like, I really want a super <laughs> rare item that I've gotten under sus situations with the evil thing, right? Um, not evil, sorry, with the fingers. And so he goes, let, let me think about it, right? And the, you guys were having a meeting. So he went to the whole group and goes, I have a player who wants a super rare item, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I ended up, spoilers, I did get a super rare item. And then he made it very clear, but we're coming for you. <laughs> that was so terrifying. I have to say, just that <laughs> looming, like, oh, you have the rare item that no one else has, but we're after you. <laughs> I'm like, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. So then there was... Um, it was funny because then I got really paranoid about it, right? <laughs> so there were some random sweeps for items and I was like, oh, okay. So then we're like trying to fence it really quickly and it was just like a mess and it was great. And um, even though my character is not in game, this item is still in game. So it can still affect people, which is amazing. 
And I love that that was because I decided, hey, I want to have this cool thing. And yeah. it became part of the world. And that was because of you guys, yeah. which is yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So I felt like it was a bit more of my game. If that, like, I know yes. that sounds really conceited, but. <laughs> yeah, um, no, you hit on two great points. Yeah. Yeah, the first is, that's it. When somebody comes to you asking for something that's a, perhaps a little bit beyond what the normal rules would allow yeah. or what uh, other players would allow, yeah. um, in a lot of cases, the best answer is yes, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're also going to put strings attached, yeah. um, especially if those strings can involve other players. Yes. Because um, giving one character one really cool thing that will make the game good for that one person yeah. and that's not great if yeah. you can have that thing that you've given to that person make the game better for a whole range yeah. of characters then you can kind of justify making yeah. it giving them that item um and the second thing which i was gonna say yeah which now i can't remember <laughs> that's okay um oh, one to me <laughs> that's okay one of the really cool things as well is um i was told i could make the item whatever i wanted now having them be so wonderful about being like here's a really cool rare item which i should not have right <laughs> i know i should not have this i tried to think of something that wouldn't benefit me too much. Um, I know that sounds really stupid because it's like an expensive rare item and the original plan was to do this whole big auction but she freaked out <laughs> and just like you know sort of thing yeah. um, and the auction would have been great. It would have yeah. been really really cool like a secret underground auction uh, but she panicked so you know stuff happens, happens. but um, the item itself couldn't benefit my character. I won't go into too much detail because the item's still floating out around there. There are quite a few people in game that would want their hands on it. Yeah. Um, but I tried to make it, it's not like I am now invincible with this item. It's like, this is an artifact. Yeah. This is something that there are people who would be interested but they're not me <laughs> yeah. because I've been given something that I could potentially have gotten a lot of yeah. wealth or resources from. Yeah in exchange for the team being after me. Yes. So that yes. was really good. Yeah. Um, I also had a few things that involved other characters and I like I went in with three people on that game. It was me and I had a bodyguard and a medic, which was insane. Um, they hadn't ever done a LARP like this, so it'd been like, hey, can we do a thing? It was amazing, it yeah. was fun. Um, I recommend as well, if you think yeah. you're coming to our game but you're not sure, get friends yeah. and bring them along. It yeah. will definitely have, um, it will just be easier. Yeah. And everyone will have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it's good if you get one or two. I think it's yeah. also good if you have friends that are in other groups. Absolutely. And, and I had friends, I'll tell you this right now, I had friends that my character would not deal with. And she didn't. So this whole event, it's like, yay, I get to play with, oh, you. And off I go, you know? Like, so it forced me to play with other players as yeah. well. So if, you have, if you're lucky and have like four or five, six friends, don't be a group of six. Yeah, you don't get, need six people. No, get like two or three. three yeah. You've got your little core group and grab other people. That's, yeah. that's probably one of my biggest things. I'm, I'm a person who... That sounded really horrible. I'm one of those people that involves people around me yeah. because I think it's more fun. I'm going yeah, there to experience that's what, And that's it's the same, like we're yeah. saying, you know, be a fan of your players and make it a collaborative game because it's better when it's collaborative. It's the same yeah. from a player perspective. Yeah. If you, like, if you want to, like, have a little character that doesn't talk to anyone is dark and mysterious and stays in the wood. You can go camping on your own. <laughs> yeah, don't bring it to a lot. Yeah, if you like coming to a lot where you've got all these amazing people doing amazing things, you want to actually interact with them. Yeah, ultra personal microplots is what I was going to say. Oh, okay. We that's a little key phrase that we use with the Black Powder crew, um, like where it. we look out for these opportunities to run these little tiny plots, um, mm -hmm. and so like fully behind the curtain, you're looking for them to be things that don't take a great deal of work from the organizer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's one scene with an NPC or even just saying, yes, player, you can have an awesome item or like dropping some loot somewhere where you know a particular group is going to find it. Mm -hmm. Something that doesn't take a great deal of effort, but will make a player or a group of players whole event heaps better and heaps more engaging and make it feel like it's really personal and yeah. like the GMs did this thing that was just for me. Yeah. That's all win. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Look for every opportunity you can to do that because 
it's heaps of fun. Like I said, it doesn't have to take that much effort from you as a GM. And it often turns into these huge event long yeah. things. I mean, yeah, for those of you who got to play Zeppelin, I'll just say a hot rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know nothing about thing, this either, so it's little okay. A tiny thing that ended up like spanning games and games and like got heaps of people involved because it was this amazing story that all just started from one player yeah. doing one thing. And we went, yes, do it. That'll be great. And then it snowballed. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the thing. So the other side of this, I guess, that if you're watching this and you're not organizing a game, you can definitely take a lot from it. How to be a good player, like communicating those things. You yeah. want something special and shiny. If they're, and look, be nice. Not all organizers have the experience that you guys have. You guys have so much. They're a really ace team. So I'm not just saying that because she's sitting here. <laughs> they have a lot of experience. And for them, it's like, oh, that's not a big deal. We'll just change the whole world. <laughs> like, not every organizer is going to have that ability. Um, but hopefully, they'll at least communicate it to you. I think that's the biggest thing. If I was like, I want a really rare, weird item because of XYZ, they could go, actually, that really does break the game. Yeah. Like, it's not fair to give you this really expensive or rare or whatever. Um, and I would go, okay, perfect. Then I know before yeah. I get into game. Where if you don't communicate, which is a big thing all over the place, yeah. you're going to get in the game and you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. You're going to be like, no, I was going to do this. Yeah. Who did you talk to about it? <laughs> like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So. And it's great to have all of the schemes and plans and all of that kind of thing. And quite often, and if you don't tell anyone about it, you may find that the opportunity doesn't come up in game. Yeah. If you do just let us know that these are your kind of ideas, then we can try to help make sure that there are opportunities for that to come up in game. It's not yeah. always going to happen, but yeah. if we can make it happen without it taking yeah. way too much, you know, if you say, oh, I want to have a palace or yeah. we're not going to build your palace. That's, yeah. that's way too much effort. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if it's something like that that we can do without um, take detracting from, the main thing is that it doesn't detract from the other players. Yeah. Be then, mindful it's not just your game, even though sometimes it can feel like it, which is yeah. amazing. Um, there are involving other people and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So um, so Black Powder and Bloodlines uh, is a yearly game. They have little workshops throughout the year for the different groups and even some workshops for making kit because honestly the kit is amazing. Like this is actual kit from in-game. A character wore this. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> And look, I found that people were so wonderful and welcoming. If you are worried about one part, like you don't have experience sewing or things like that, post on the page. There's people there who want to help. Um, if you're worried about role play and you don't have a lot of experience with role play, grab a friend. If you don't have a friend, make a new one. Post on the page. I'm really new. I'd love to do something with someone else. You can be siblings. You can be whatever it is. Um, yeah. And that's how you make lasting friendships as well, I think. So yeah. um, very welcoming community. Definitely come out. If you're anywhere in Australia, it's definitely worth booking a flight for, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it will be ongoing hopefully forever. Yes, yes, forever. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> is it like a trilogy or a set amount of games um, or do we not know yet? It, it will be, it's not, uh, so we definitely plan to have an arc. Yeah. Um, our group likes running stories that have kind of an arc that we build towards yeah. and then have an ending. Mostly because I don't really like seeing that all games must end. Yeah. And it's sad to me when the game ends, like, basically after the worst event that they ever ran. Yeah. Because that's when the next game doesn't get enough players and they can't run another event and the, yeah. all the organisers are burned out for running. Anyway, let's not go into that. So it will have a set amount. Um, yeah. it, I can't tell you how many. Yeah. That's More okay. than three. Okay. Less than ten. Okay, that's great. <laughs> that's a good commitment. I will accept your commitment for a three to ten year relationship. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it will be an ongoing game. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll give you more information if it does start to be like the last few events. We'll yeah, people which will know and stuff. Yeah. Like that, which is not yet. This not is yet. Definitely right at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, so we're still really new. You've only yeah. missed one. Um, and to be fair, my character died. So I'm coming yes. in new and fresh. Yes. And there's not really any penalties for that. I don't think. No, Are there any no, boons no. for people who survive or it's just all about the same? Yeah, in terms of the mechanical rules, Everyone is always on a level playing yeah. field. Awesome. Um, obviously, if you already have connections and that kind of thing, there's yeah. those kinds of in-game 
benefits. Yes. But like other other than that, you basically start fresh every yeah. game anyway. And yeah. Unless you happen to be one of the nobles that happen to own land or whatever. Yeah. There's but a couple that's pretty things. Rare. <laughs> there's a couple things like you could have been really good and had a whole bunch of wealth from last game or something like if yeah. you played really well. If you're lucky you did... enough to be a noble that had land, you'll keep that wealth. Otherwise, it all goes anyway. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> yes. So read the rules, guys. But no, they'll be really clear about that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And pretty much everyone starts. From scratch. Yes, yeah. yes. So that's really exciting. So if you've already missed the game, look into it. It's still running. Um, definitely come and give it a crack. I'll definitely put in the description all of your stuff. Um, and hopefully I'll see you guys there. And I'm also going to be doing a video about my experience and some tips and things like that I have over on your channel. So I'll link that as well. And so yeah, definitely give those both a like and subscribe to them because they're doing lots of videos. This is something also very unique that I've found, at least with the games here, is there's a lot of videos like tokens what are the tokens? What do they mean? You can watch like a two minute video about that and then know everything that you need to know. It's great. So good work on all that. So if you want to know more about the game, head over to their stuff. Um, even if uh, you're not in the area, it's still really worth learning about and you know, you can incorporate some of this stuff into other things. So thank you so much for being on the channel and thank you for running one of my favorite games. Thank you for having really me. Of and course. really complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try not to lie about these things, because then what people are going to go, they're going to be like, those black powder people are so mean. <laughs> no, they're not. They're all lovely. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. it's just the care factors there. Yes, it shows yes, through, we definitely so. care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I will say that there are some times you may not get the lovely, yes, go for an answer. You may get the be careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> Robert's very good at that. Oh, our GMs, Rob will... is really... Yeah, he's, he I has the Rob perfect though. way of saying, yes, you can have that. You're going to regret this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the look in the body language that tells you you're going to regret it. I yeah. don't think I've ever heard him actually say it, but you're no, like, no, no. is that a bad choice? And he's like, well, you're making it. <laughs> you know, it's up to you. Yeah. So I love that. I love that. It's so good. And I do, I feel like, um, yeah, always working with players and that sort of thing. So thank you again for coming and awesome. make sure to check out the video I'm doing on their channel. Yes. Okay. Bye. And, oh, oh, until I see you again, make sure to keep being your weird and wonderful selves. <laughs>